Hi everyone. I'd like to begin by wishing you all a very happy and blessed Easter. I'd also like to once again thank you for all your support over these last years that we have produced these weekly masses. We announced a few weeks back that we would no longer be offering a Sunday Mass. But we are not stopping everything. We are inviting you to still join us on a Sunday for a celebration of God's Word, where you will hear the readings of the Sunday and also a reflection on those readings. Now, we know that many people are saying, well, we're going to miss the Mass, and we understand that. But for many different reasons, we have had to decide which way we are going to move forward. And therefore, we have decided not to abandon you, but to replace that Sunday Mass with a celebration of God's Word. And we're hoping that you will be nourished by God's Word when you participate with us, when you join us every Sunday, starting next Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter. May God bless you and your loved ones at this time. From all of us at the Jesuit Institute, a happy Easter. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Easter Sunday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father David Neuhaus. The Lord is truly risen, hallelujah. To him be glory and power for all the ages of eternity. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, happy Easter. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. But as always, brothers and sisters, let us begin by acknowledging our sins and so preparing ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death, 
and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter opened his mouth and said, You know the word which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses to all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him manifest, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. This This is is the the day day the Lord Lord has made. Let Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This This is the day the Lord has made. Let Let us us rejoice in it and be glad in it. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. His right hand is exalted. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. I shall not die. I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. This This is the day day the Lord Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord, ha- by the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This, this is, is the day the Lord, Lord has made. made. Let us be glad in it and, and be, be glad. glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is in our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple 
the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter then came out with the other disciple, and they went toward the tomb. They both ran. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first, and stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying and the napkin which had been on his head not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is the first day of the week and still dark. Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb. Despite everything that has happened last Friday, she still seeks her beloved. The only thing that remains is the tomb in which he was laid. Surely she must have thought that everything is lost, and yet within her a glimmer of hope refuses to be extinguished. Perhaps she remembers the verse of Scripture, The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. The enveloping darkness evoked the formless void into which all creation had reverted on that terrible Friday when he died on the cross. The tomb was the lifeless deep. Her beloved's own cry of abandon echoed the prophet Jeremiah's despair. I looked on the earth, and lo, it was a formless void, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and lo, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and lo, there was no one at all. No one at all, no life, not even a breath. The surprise as she arrives at the tomb and sees the stone removed from its mouth surely reminded her that in the beginning, the God of her people, her father and her beloveds, sent out his spirit over the desolate emptiness. The spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. The spirit is described as a wind, a ruach, invisible and yet evident in the movement it inspires. It is a movement that defies the lifelessness that engulfs all that is. The end that was the sealed tomb has become a beginning in its openness. It is, is this not God? God does not allow death to triumph and will not accept that the final destination is a tomb. Mary Magdalene, needs nothing else to set her in movement, as she runs to report that something is not as it should be. They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. Mary does not yet have the words to say what she surely intuits. The story is not over. It never really is. Who has taken him? Where have they put him? What is going on? She has not yet had the encounter with the Risen One. It is still the moment before she fully comprehends that the words, let there be light and there was light, have yet again transformed the history of the world. Soon she will behold the one who had proclaimed, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Peter, 
and the other disciple run to the tomb. The emptiness of the tomb is offset by the enigma of the burial cloths that have been carefully laid aside. They are only a hint of the life that will fill the world. What has happened is deliberate, ordered, and points to a horizon that is opening up as the dawn conquers the darkness. This is what they experience in the reading the Church proposes to us this Sunday of Easter. On the following days of Easter, we will hear of the multiple encounters with the one who is risen. However, already today, Surely they remember what Jesus had solemnly declared, I am the resurrection and the life. The intentional laying aside of the burial cloths, the one that had covered the face put in a different place, this orderliness also evokes the creation of the heavens and the earth. Each day of creation, carefully and meditatively revealing God's final goal. The human person in God's image and likeness, fully alive and rejoicing in God's loving care. Today again we experience creation, the new creation, as we proclaim that Jesus is alive. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. We have been invited to live intensely the past days. We have been called not only to observe Jesus' passion and death, but to suffer and die with him. The agony of Good Friday is the agony we know, not only from the liturgy of the readings and prayers, but from living in the world so enveloped in hatred and war, in selfishness and poverty, in violence and crime, in greed and corruption. The silence of Holy Saturday is a load shedding that prevents all activity, a Sabbath of silence and contemplation, a Sabbath of memory of what was. How have we come to this point? Where is the Creator and Father of us all? Where is the image in which we have been created? Can it be that this image and resemblance lies cold and lifeless in a tomb? The cruel facts of history and our own collusion with them have left us with questions that seem unanswerable. And yet today, the spirit hovers over the face of the deep. It begins with a tremor as slowly the realization dawns that we are alive, that we are filled with the breath of a life that is not our own a life that comes from on high. The tremor must today become a dance, the dance of joy with which we embrace the world, proclaiming at the top of our voices, He is not here. The stone has been removed. The burial cloths have been folded up. He is alive. Hallelujah. On this Resurrection Sunday, let us now proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the The Father Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, 
in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now make our prayers in the presence of the risen Lord and before God, our Father. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis and all bishops, priests and religious, that animated by the joy of Easter, they may witness to the joy of the resurrection with renewed conviction. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. Let us pray for all Christians throughout the world that animated by the joy of Easter, they may come together in unity and bear witness to Jesus, the risen Lord, who desired that we be one. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Let us pray for our country, still in the throes of so much darkness and death, yet thirsting for light and liberation that its leaders may search for ways to bring new life and energy. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Let us pray for all countries that are locked in war and conflict, that our risen Lord may reveal himself fully as Prince of Peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For the sick and dying, for the depressed and those weighed down by sadness. May the risen Lord strengthen, give them hope, and deepen their faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For all those newly baptized, may they, may they encounter Christ ever more deeply, follow him ever more closely, and witness to him ever more truly. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. These prayers and all those that are deep in our heart, we lay before you, Jesus. And as we say, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. And so, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Butti, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those that are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Hallelujah. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, our Mass is ended. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah.